that. Get that heap out of my way. I'm not in the mood. You want that kitty car of yours sent back to the junkyard? You think so? I know so. <laughs> Try and catch me. Idea. Never mind that now. Let me get this motorcycle off you. Here, give me your arm. Put it around my shoulder. I'll get you in my car and take you to a hospital. He wouldn't get over and let you pass. Well, he was a road hog, Dad, and he You could... raced with him. Well, I was in a hurry. To get where? Well, I... I... No place. And you drove... Uh, 87 miles an hour trying to get there. Furthermore, you heard a motorcycle officer. Oh, well, I couldn't help that, Dad. You see, I skidded and... You and... said it. You skidded right into trouble. Now, you listen to me, Tim Bradley. I've been a patient father. I've kept you out of scrapes, paid your fines for speeding, gotten you out of jail. Oh, now listen, Dad, you Listen, know... I've listened too long. I'm sick of the whole business. I'm through. Well, you know that if you'll just speak to the police commissioner, you can get this I thing off. I wouldn't fixed. speak to him under any consideration. You'll do your own talking from now on, young man. The only way I'll help you is when you've demonstrated your ability at something other than driving a fast motor car. There's a job in this shoe factory waiting for you when you settle down. Oh, you know I was never cut out for the shoe business. All right, then go ahead. Look for adventure and see where you end up. Oh, all right, Dad, if that's the way you feel about it. No feelings of any kind. Go on, I'm busy. Okay, but... You know you don't mean it. Hello, Kelton, old scout. Oh, hello, Mr. Bradley. Want a cash check for me? I'll be glad to. How much do you want? How much do you think they'll find me for going 87 miles an hour? Well, it's generally a dollar a mile, I believe. Yeah, well, I'll need that much. Better make it a hundred, though. All right, sir. Tim Bradley. You're charged with driving an automobile at the rate of 87 miles an hour and causing the injury of an officer. Guilty or not guilty, how do you plead? Guilty, Your Honor. One hundred dollars or 30 days. And the only reason I'm not remanding you to jail is because you had the decency to go back and help the injured officer. Thank you, sir. Dave Jordan. You're charged, Mr. Jordan, with driving an automobile at the rate of 92 miles an hour. Guilty or not guilty? Guilty, Your Honor.
Hey, you. Your face looks familiar. Oh, pal, I wonder what become of you. Why didn't you wonder what became of me the other day when you walked off and left me to face that cop? Well, I got pissed down the road a couple miles myself. Hey, what a cost you for speeding up there? A hundred bucks. Oh, that's too bad. Now, you're telling me. You're a big moose, but I ought to pop you right on the nose. That's what those guys are. What's that got to do with what we're talking Some about? Some of the time, pal. I gotta go. Go where? To the fire, of course. Oh, just a minute. Hey, listen, I'll fight you any other time for money, marbles, or chocolate. Right now, I'm gonna go to that fire. Not without me, you big mug. excitement for nothing. I've seen better false alarms. You know, there's a law against hitting crazy people. You're the craziest galoot I've ever seen. Where are you going now? Wait a minute. I want you to meet a regular guy. Hey, Dad! How are you? Hello, Gun. How'd you come out in court? Uh, I paid, as usual. Oh, uh, Will you come over here a minute? I want you to meet a pal of mine. Sure. Dad, I want you to meet Mr. What is your name? Tim Bradley. How are you, my boy? I don't suppose by any chance you're a relative of my old friend John T. Bradley of Bradley Bill Shoes. Well, I was until this morning. What do you mean? Speeding. Oh. You know, I like to drive fast cars, and he doesn't. He's in the shoe business. He likes that. I don't. <laughs> what are you going to do now? Well, that's a mystery that hasn't been solved yet. It's... Well, it's a good-looking ring you got. Oh, thanks. Say, hey, if you're not doing anything, why don't you come into the fire department with me? I take my first examination next week. Oh, no. I want a lot of thrills and excitement in my life. Thrills mm -hmm. and excitement? Say, what do you think this city be without the fire department? A playground? I know all about that. I know all about it. You know, I think the life would be a little too confining. Too confining, huh? What you probably mean is that you couldn't make the grade. What the fire department wants is fighters. What do you mean by that last crack, you big lug? Say, the only reason I came all out right, here was you... All right, there's an alley right oh, over come here. On, I want to talk to both of you. Come on. Uh, come on. Uh, I thought I ought to tell you, your boys joined the fire department. Won't hurt him. Hurt him? It'll knock a little sense into his head. You tell that drill master not to ease up on him. Give him the limit. Yes, I've already issued instructions to that effect. My boy gets the same. <laughs> no better training in the world, John. Hmm. Imagine Tim doing 87 miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, they nab my boy for doing 92. <laughs> Well, Dave probably had the inside on the turns. Your boy had the fastest car, Dave told me. Why, Tim can get him any day in the week. My boy's a speed dealer. Oh, don't kid yourself. Dave can't be stopped once he starts rolling. My son's been arrested seven times in seven weeks. Yeah, well, I can't catch, Dave. I'll bet you a thousand dollars Tim can beat him. If I had a thousand, I'd raise you. Yes, Mr. Bradley? You rang for me? Did I? Well, it's, it's nothing. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> and we're supposed to be middle-aged and sensible. Eh? <laughs> I guess it's in the blood, Bill. <clears throat> Have a cigar. Mm idea of the courage of these firemen? All the honor and glory they bring to their families? 
Oh, shut up. How do I know it was going to be like this? Hey, you two. If it'll make you feel any more at home, I'll have a kitchen and dining room built under that truck. Oh, it was just... Don't like... answer back. Get out from there before you take root. We're starting a life net drill. Yes, sir. Heroes, that's what they are. Heroes for your mug. Now, before we start the life net drill, I want to show you what to do in case someone is overcome by gas or smoke. Here, you on the end. You're the unconscious man. Me, Michi? I mean you. Get out on your back there and make it snappy. Go on, unconscious. You heard him. Hey, listen, don't start calling me unconscious or I'll... You know what? I'll bust you one that's oh, on Now, wait a minute. If there's any busting to be done around here, I'll be the one to do it. Uh, uh, oh, O'Hara. Never mind the smoke drill. Put him through the life net drill and make it snappy. Give him the works. Drop the handkerchief. Get up there and try it again. Yes, sir. Okay, Bradley. Jump. Coming down. We've got fire horses that can make a better jump than that. Oh, so you land on your back with your arms outstretched to help take up the shock. Go on up there, try it again. Yes, sir. This time, jump. Don't try to fly. Not bad. For an invalid with a wooden leg. What was the matter with it, Captain O'Hara? No dignity, no poise. Try it again. Yes, sir. Here I come. And here you go back up again and do it over. And if you don't jump like I told you this time, I'll pull the net out from under you. Yes, sir. Great idea. I doubt it, but what is it? Let's miss the net and land on that guy O'Hara. What's the matter? You got glue on your feet? Hey, take it easy, pal. This ain't no hundred yard dash. Well, there's no turtle race either. You're slipping backward every day. Oh, you think so? I know so. Oh, you... Oh, go on, go on, brainless. Faster! The house had burned down before you ever rescued anybody! It's teamwork that counts. You've got exactly 50 seconds to raise that ladder, lower it in, and get the loaded line to the top of it. Now you're ready. Yes, sir. Yeah. Go. You heard what O'Hara said about teamwork and just... Well, what about it? If you want to be a teammate, let me wear that ring. I'm stepping out tonight. Hey, what's the idea? You know that thing's an heirloom. All right, if you want to be selfish about it, fine pal you are. Go on, get up there with the hose, you big slug. Well, what do you think I'm doing? Go on, go on, crazy. Now, boys, you worked hard during your training period. 
and you're about to be assigned to stations. For the next six months, you're probationary firemen, expected to live up to the high traditions established by those who preceded you. I know that time and effort spent on you will not be wasted. That's all. Who's right? March! One, two, three. What do you think of that, John? Well, if I hadn't seen it myself, I wouldn't have believed it. Tim is positively the outstanding rookie of that class. Oh, you think so, do you? I know so. Oh, yeah. so you can't live without it. Now, there are a lot of things I could live without. And you're one of them. Good morning. What's good about it? Will you look where you're going? You put that thing there on purpose! Say, listen, unconscious, if I ever put anything in your way on purpose, it'd be a load of dynamite, you and your heroes. Did you ever see a hero with a mop in his hand? Oh, do you don't think these garbons give me any thrill, do you? I don't know what they give you, but I'd like to give you a bust on the nose. Oh, you couldn't make the grade, brother. Oh, you think so? I know so! Hey, you guys have been popping off for weeks around here. Now, why don't you go back and settle it? That suits me fine. Swear. Come on, boys! The rookies are gonna have a fight. That's easy. Thank <laughs> you. 
down the ladder and get your picture in the paper. Well, can I help it if the newspaper boys think I'm a hero? <laughs> yeah? Chief wants to see you and Tim Bradley right away in his office. Okay. Hey, Tim, come on. The chief wants to see us right away. Yes, sir. Yes. If you two heroes can spare the time. I suppose you've been so busy talking about that fire, you forgot about what happened on the way going to it. Oh. Oh, I had great hopes for you two boys. I thought you had the making of firemen. But you seem to have neglected the most important part of your training. Without it, you're useless in this department. I'm speaking of teamwork. Your lack of teamwork started when you joined the department. You've been joying at each other like a couple of schoolboys. Yesterday you went too far. Well, what do you mean, sir? I was driving right behind you for blocks. I saw you snap the front end of that hook and ladder and almost snap Tim's head off. And I saw you drive under some trees and almost knock Dave out of the Tillerman seat. Do either of you call that teamwork? Sorry, it won't happen again, sir. Oh, you bet your sweet life it won't happen again. Now you listen to me, you two incompetent nitwits. Do you realize that your tomfoolery might have meant the loss of life? If that hook and ladder had overturned, do you know what had happened to the people in the street? Do you know what had happened to the victims in that burning building if you hadn't gotten there in time? Did either one of you think of that? No, sir. Oh, I ought to fire you both out of the department. I'm going to give you one more chance. I'm going to let you down easy. You both lose your privileges for two weeks. That means no time off, you understand? Yes, sir. Ah, that's all. Beat it. Yes, sir. You know, I've been thinking, Jim. Well, don't strain yourself. No kidding. For the past two weeks now, ever since we've been paying for that last scrap, it seems to me that what the old chief said was right. You mean about this teamwork? Yeah. I'd like to show him that we've still got the makings of good firemen in us. You on the level about this? Sure I am. Look here, we've fought and fussed and argued, and where's it gotten us? Right up on the carpet. Well, I guess maybe you're right at that. I know I am, Tim. If we don't get some teamwork into this thing, we're both licked. That's all there is to it. Of course, if I thought you were serious about this, you know, uh, uh, you can count on me. I was never more serious in my life. If you don't believe... Hey, just to show you that I am serious, you can wear this. You've always liked it. Oh, well, that's, that's mighty swell of you, Dave. Well, I know that a lot of our troubles have been my fault. Oh, no more than mine, you know. I haven't been any help either. Well, from now on, let's pull together, huh? You know, one for all and all for one. And no more scraps? Swell. Great.
How do you do? I'm from the fire department. Is there a Miss Judy Manners lives here? Yes, sir. Apartment 21. Thank you. Come right in. This is an inspector from the fire department, Miss Manners. How do you do? He wants to look your place over. Oh, certainly. Come in. Aren't you Miss Manners? Uh, yes. Haven't I seen you somewhere before? Sure, the day your office burned. Oh, of course. Only there were so many firemen, it's hard to remember them all. I was the one that picked you up when you were unconscious. Oh, really? Of course, that's all in a day's work, but... Well, I did wonder how you were getting along. I'm as good as new again. You're looking swell. Uh, you say there's something wrong with the fire escape? Oh, yes, we tried to keep them inspected. The uh, chief's pretty particular about it, you know. The chief is? Yes, I'll take a look at it. In the fire department, madam. Uh, is there a Miss Judy Manners living in this building? Yes, sir. Apartment 21. I'll show you. Oh, never mind. Thank you. Yes? Well, if it isn't Miss Manners, you're the last person in the world I expected to see here. I was sent over to... Well, you're the fireman. Well, we had our pictures taken together. Sure. I'm the one that carried you down the ladder. Oh, of course. How stupid of me not to remember. We've been getting some complaints about the fire escapes in this building, so the chief asked me if I'd come over and take a look at them myself. It'll only take me a minute. See, there doesn't happen to be a guy around here by the name of Tim Bradley, does there? And if there is, what about it, unconscious? One for all and all for one, eh? Chiseler, you double-crosser. Fine teamwork, huh? Just a minute. How about letting me in on this? What's this guy doing around here? He said he was an inspector. Inspector, my eye. You know what he does? He drives the front end of a hook and ladder truck. Do you know what this guy does? Sits on the rear end and goes wherever I take him. Well, then neither of you are inspectors. You said it, lady. It looks as though we both got the same idea. Only you got your signals mixed. <laughs> I guess that's it. This is Dave Jordan. My name is Tim Bradley. How do you do? Well, now that you're here, can I give you some lunch? How about some sandwiches and coffee? Sure. OK. You know, I could bust you, you right. think so? I know so. Boys, can you give me a hand? Oh, sure. Uh, those people you were working for, aren't they going back into business? Not for several weeks, until the insurance is settled. Oh. Well, that may take months. I was afraid of that. Why, you mean things are kind of tough? Well, they're always tough when you're out of work. Have you any folks out here? No. I lived in an orphanage until I went to work. Well, I wouldn't worry about it if I were you. Something will turn up. Hey, we get around a lot. Maybe we could help you find something. Oh, that, that's sweet of you. But I don't want you to go to any trouble. I'll make out. Oh, well, it wouldn't be any trouble for us. Just place your faith in the fire department. <laughs> well, unconscious, we better be on our way. Yes. Well, thanks for the handout. Yeah. I sure enjoyed it. Well, boys, if you're inspecting any more fire escapes in the neighborhood, drop in on me. We Thank will. You. Thanks. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, you forgot your cap. Oh, thank you. Oh, that poor kid out of a job and everything. You know, we ought to do something about that. Yeah, but what? Say, my dad might give her a job in the shoe factory. He'd probably be glad to. Let's go see him. Kelvin speaking. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello, Kelvin. Oh, hello. Oh, I didn't recognize you in that uniform. You never recognize anything worthwhile. What did you say, sir? Oh, skip it. Come on, Dave. Hello, Dad. I want you to meet a pal of mine, Dave Jordan. How do you do, Mr. Bradley? Hmm. Tim's told me a lot about you. Yes, I dare say. Been driving that fire engine too fast? No, not this time. We were just going past, and I wanted Dave to see what a shoe factory looked like. It was thoughtful of you to show him around. Well, the place is looking prosperous. You seem to have a lot of people working out there. Get to the point, young man. What stimulated the sudden interest in the shoe business? Well, you see... Uh... No, I don't see. 
But I lay odds of five to one, there's a girl mixed up in it somewhere. That's right, sir, and she needs a job very badly. Mm, I'm beginning to get the drip. Well, now, this isn't as old as somebody we didn't know or couldn't recommend. How long have you known her? Oh, maybe a year. Well, it's closer to two years. And she's one of the finest. Oh, you'd like her, sir. And suppose I did. Then what? Well, as I said, she needs a job very badly. Yeah, and she'd be crazy about the shoe business. Now, hold on. Aside from the fact that the girl is fine and you know I'd like her, what other qualifications has she? Well, she's always given satisfaction every place she's ever worked. See, she's been trying to keep her courage up ever since we pulled her out of that burning building. building. Oh, so that's the girl. I thought you'd known her for two years. Oh, listen, Dad. The people she worked for would be glad to recommend her. She'd be a great help to Kelton out at the cashier's desk. <laughs> well, all right. Send her in to see me. Thanks, Dad. Oh, that's sure swell of you, Mr. Bradley. <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, next time, would you just as soon rescue a night watchman? I could really use one. Sure. Remember that. An order for one night watchman. <laughs> You know, Dad was tickled to death to make a place for you in the office. Yeah, when Tim and I got through telling him all about you, he said to me, Dave, that's just the girl I need for an assistant cashier. But neither of you know anything about me. Well, we'll take a chance on that. Yeah, we know our women, boy. Oh, that's sweet of you. I hope I can make good. You will. We're going to help. I'm going to spend every Sunday explaining the shoe business to you. Yeah, what about me doing a little explaining? Say, I wish you'd run over to the car and get those oranges, will you? Yeah, I'll be tickled to death. I'll run right over. Now, hey, horse face. Walk. Don't run. You know, it's bad to run after eating. Say, by the way, what about next Sunday? What about it? Suppose you and I go to the beach. Well, how about Dave? Oh, he'll probably have to work. I'd love to. Then it's a date? Oak. Oh, swell. Oh, you wear that ring all the time, don't you? Yes, it's, um, it's, uh, here, try it on. See if it'll fit you. Well, it does just about. Why don't you wear it a while, little? Probably bring you good luck. Mm. You know, it's so interesting looking. Yeah, you see, that's an heirloom. It's, it's been in our family for years and years. Say, what's the idea? Where are the oranges? You knew darn well there weren't any oranges in that car, you mug. There weren't? Well, I, oh, I remember now. I forgot to get them. Yeah. Walk. Don't run. And choose the nearest exit, unconscious. Mm, oh, boys, it's getting late. Don't you think we better head for home? No, I suppose we better. Say, Dave, when you pack this stuff up, be careful. Don't break those thermos bottles, will you? It's been a perfect day, hasn't it, Dave? Yeah, perfect. Hey, wait a minute, unconscious. I'm gonna let you drive. Me drive? Sure. <laughs> you can always drive the front end. I can only go where you take me. You can go to home, James. We can't hold off any longer. Old man Bradley's bound to get suspicious. Yes, but how are you figuring on handling it? Leave that to me. And tomorrow's payday, and there'll be 15 grand in cash here in the office. But what about this new dame that's working here? Say, that girl was sent straight from heaven. You shouldn't call me during working hours. Oh, Dad won't mind. Suppose I pick you up after work and we take you in a movie. Well, I may be a little late. You see, today is payday and there's a lot of work to be done. All right. I'll meet you at the house about 8 o'clock, okay? Goodbye. Miss Manners, would you mind running an errand for me while you're out at lunch? Not at all. Police contracts have to be approved by our lawyer. Uh, will you drop them off at his office? Uh, do you know where it is? No. The Fullerton Building, room 905. Have you phoned her home to see if she's there? Yes, sir, I have. In fact, I've done about everything except notify the police. And the last you saw of the payroll money was when you put it in the safe? Yes, sir, and that was this morning. When this man's girl didn't come back from lunch, I naturally got suspicious. I went to the safe, opened it, and found the money had disappeared. She didn't say where she was going when she left at noon? No, sir, not a word. She just walked out. You see, we know so little about her that it's rather difficult to know where to begin to search. Yes, Mr. Bradley? 
Get my son. Yes, sir. I don't believe Judy took that money. She isn't that kind of a girl. You admit she's just a recent acquaintance, yet you know all about her. How long do you think she worked for these Thomas people before you brought her here? For quite some time, I imagine. Two weeks. And she came to them from another city with references that looked to me to be forged. Well, I suppose there's no chance trying to convince you. You've evidently made up your mind she's guilty. <laughs> she hasn't returned to explain, has she? Has it ever occurred to you that maybe she can't? Just what do you mean? There is the possibility that she may be held somewhere. Oh, nonsense. It's plain what happened. She saw her chance and took it. I don't believe it. You don't believe it. You don't. <sighs> what a fool I was to listen to such an arrangement. I tell you, Judy is no thief. I tell you that we got along very nicely without you and we can continue to do so. Now get out. Oh, Dad, get I... Get out! Listen, unconscious. I talked to Judy at noon on the phone today. I had a date with her tonight. Maybe that's why she disappeared, huh? I'll be a sap. Did she seem worried or nervous when you talked to her? No. I hope we're not mistaken in that, Dame. We're not. You think so? I know so. You're a smart girl, everything's going to be all right. You're going to a safe spot until we can get out of the country. And if you make any noise, you're liable to get hurt. Before we take her out of here, let's see where that night watchman is. It won't do any good to open that window and yell. We're up nine floors, and there isn't a soul in the building.
you think you're pretty smart, don't you? What do you mean? Set the fire to that curtain so the specter would warn the fire department. Yeah. Come on, we'll go out the back way. Yesterday? Did you give any former address? No, he was from out of town. You don't think there was anything wrong, do you? I don't know. Say, did you see anybody leave this building? No. Is there a freight entrance here? Yes, in the alley. Let's have a look at that. Take a look at that parking lot, see if we can get any information there. All right. Did the car just pull out of here? Yes. Is there a girl in it? No, just a man alone. You sure of that? Yes, I noticed in particular because the guy's clothes were ringing wet. Did you get the license number of that car? Yeah, we always take a record of that when they first come in. Let me see it, will you? Can I have these? Yeah, do you bring them back? Oh, sure. Come on, slug. Where are you going? We're going to check the license number of this car. All right. See who that is. We're inspectors from the fire department inspecting this building. Mind if we come in? No, not at all. We won't be long. Fire escape here. Where does this door lead? The bedroom. Is there a fire escape there? No. I'd rather you wouldn't go in there. Why? My sister's sick and bad. Oh, that's too bad. Well, we won't disturb it. We'll just look in. I think you better take a look anyway, just to make it official. Your sister? That's right. What's the matter with her? Nervous breakdown. We're trying to keep her quiet. Oh, that is too bad. What caused it? What are you fellas? Firemen or doctors? Get on the phone, call the cops. 
I wouldn't do that if I were you. Oh, no. Well, I guess you can telephone now. Yeah, these mugs. Hello, honey. Give me police headquarters. I'll be back later. Very well, Doctor. How is she? As well as can be expected. She's suffering from nervous shock and exhaustion. What about questioning her? Later. But it's important. Those two mugs we took to the station won't talk, and we've got to get the girl's story. Nevertheless, the doctor is right in protecting his patient. Okay. How soon, Doc? About nine o'clock tonight. We'll be here with a police stenographer. Come on, George. Is she in any danger? She'll be all right. The nurse will take care of her. Tim, we've got to get to the station. Come on. Uh, I suppose you're right. I'll see you later, Dad. All right. Well, you got me sewed up, haven't you? Watch this three cushion shot, boy. Ah, how do you like that? What's the matter with you? Why don't you snap out of it? You'd think that we hadn't found the girl the way you act. You realize that in just a few moments they're going to start to question her? You know what that means. A browbeat her. And try to make her admit she's guilty of something she didn't do. You know, Tim, I've been wondering. What about it? Not Judy. Well, what about her? I was wondering if maybe after all she didn't make suckers out of us. Now don't be a sap. Did she try to get a message to us with that ring? Well, maybe that ring was dropped accidentally. Oh, forget it. Okay. Hey, there's something else I want to tell you, too. What now? Well, I. I know you're in love with Judy. For a while, I, I thought maybe, maybe I had a chance. But as it is now, I, well, I hope it goes the way you want it to. Thanks. I think I'll go over to that apartment. You can't go. You're on duty. Yeah, I know. Listen, pal. If you leave the station now, you're breaking faith with the department. Judy wouldn't want you to do that. You know it. Don't be a chump. Don't leave here. I suppose you're right. Feeling better? Yes. What time will they be here? Pretty soon. Your broth will be ready in a minute. Thanks. A oh, nurse, wasn't there someone else in the apartment here with you? Yes, a police officer. He went out to get something to eat. Well, then I'm arrested, huh? Oh, of course not. That's just a formality. I just saw the officer going down the hall. He told me I could see Miss Manners. I'm very sorry, but it's against the doctor's orders. Well, I'm very sorry, but I'm going to see her. The nurse, what's the matter? What do you want? A few words alone with you, uninterrupted. Now, you're going to sign a confession that you took that money from the safe and turned it over to Jackson and Kane. Understand? You sent me there and had them hold me prisoner so they wouldn't suspect you of being the thief. Yeah, but you're not going to tell them that. It's the first thing I'll say. No, no, you're not. You're not going to get a chance. You're either going to sign that confession or you're going to leave this room with me right now. Oh, no, I'm not. No, you don't take it.
window. Here, drag that hose in the alley and work it from that fire escape on the other building. Seems to me you should be willing to settle down now and learn the shoe business. That's what Judy thinks, and I promise. Beginning the first of the year. Why not right now? Well, because I think the fire department's given me a new start in life, and I ought to give them a certain amount of my time to pay my debt. Well, I guess you're right, son. Yes? Thank you. Kelton and his accomplices were sentenced this morning. They got 20 years. Good. But that's nothing. Judy and I are beginning a life sentence. Oh, you think so? We, we know, know so, unconscious. <laughs>